Injure us at the Meg's Point Nature Center, ready for another one of my favorite animals. Before I talk about the animals that we're going to do today, I want to remind everyone that this is a Department of Energy and Environmental Protection facility, which right now, unfortunately, is closed. As soon as we're open, I welcome you to come and visit us here at the Meg's Point Nature Center at Hammonasset Beach State Park. The other Connecticut state parks are open. So you can visit Hammonasset, you can visit other parks, you cannot visit buildings or facilities. But you can visit us online. So if you go to megspointnaturecenter.org, you'll be able to see all of the programs that I've done here. You can also connect with other DEEP facilities like Kellogg Environmental Center, Dinosaur State Park, Goodwin Conservation Center, and you can learn all about the Great Backyard Pursuit, which are lots of fun events that you can do at home. And all of our facilities have things that you can do at home. All right, today's animals, because it's a group of animals, are the sea turtles that are found in Long Island Sound. Now, let me see a thumbs up for everybody that didn't think we had sea turtles in Long Island Sound. A lot of people, when they see or hear about sea turtles in Long Island Sound, they think, oh, I must be crazy. I didn't really see a sea turtle. They can't be in Long Island Sound. It's too small, whatever the reason. But we do get sea turtles in Long Island Sound. There are five different kinds of sea turtles that we get. And I'm gonna go over all of the different kinds and talk a little bit about each one. So the first one that we get in Long Island Sound is the Kemp's Ridley or the Atlantic Ridley. This is the smallest of the sea turtles that we can find in Long Island Sound and it's only the size of a large dinner plate, okay? These are probably one of the most rare turtles in the world, maybe the most rare animals in the world because estimates are you know, 300, maybe a little bit more in the entire world. So there are not a lot of these left. The, the Ridleys are really hard to find. They actually get a lot of them up on Cape Cod. And when the weather changes really fast, they end up washing up on the beach. If the temperature drops really fast, it's called cold stunning. And these turtles will go into sort of a catatonic state and wash up along the beaches of Cape Cod, sometimes into Rhode Island. Usually not in Long Island Sound, but we can sometimes see them in Long Island Sound. All right, the next one, the loggerhead. This is a larger turtle, uh, quite a bit bigger than the, the Ridley, and it's really similar to the green sea turtle. So the loggerhead in the green, you can look very similar, kind of hard to tell them apart. Hopefully I'm not getting a glare there. Okay, so those are two very common turtles that you can get in the sound. I'm gonna spend a minute talking about the green because I actually have um, some things to show you here about a green sea turtle. So the first, this is a replica skull of a green sea turtle. Okay, this is about how big their head is going to be. Next to my head, not very large. It could really do some damage if it were to bite you. Remember, turtles don't have teeth. They have a beak, similar to a bird's beak, and the beak is made of the same material as a bird's beak, which is also the same material as your fingernails, okay, which is keratin. Um, so they can cut into you a little bit if it were to bite you. There's only one reason the turtle's gonna bite you, and that's if your hand is way too close to its face. Otherwise, they're just swimming by, they're not gonna bother you if you don't bother them. Same with a lot of wild animals. Now, I also have, unfortunately, a mounted one. Now, this was taken. These are illegal to take, okay? On the bottom, there is an evidence tag. This was an illegal confiscation. They took it away from the person that had it because they couldn't have it, shouldn't have it. And then after the trial, it can be uh, given out to nature centers for education. So that's a good idea of the green sea turtle's shell, okay? Really interesting, it's not green. Its name doesn't come from the color of the turtle, it comes from the color inside the turtle. 
Years ago, people used to eat these turtles. All of the sea, tur sea turtles were eaten. And the color of the green sea turtles meet the inside of the turtle is green. There's actually an algae that lives in their muscles. And when they cook it, when you make soup out of it or what have you, it's going to be a greenish color. So they called it the green sea turtle. Now, uh, let's go to the next turtle. And then I'll go back. I have another thing about the green sea turtle. OK, so this is the hawksbill. This is not another one that's not a large turtle, small turtle, really rare in Long Island Sound. Most books that you look in won't list this as a resident of Long Island Sound. But I know some people that are really good turtle people that have seen them in the sound, really occasional though in the sound. So this is another mounted version of the Hawksbill. Again, these are illegal to have. Uh, this one was purchased a very long time ago, back in the 50s. People used to be able to collect these. They would eat the meat and they would bring this home as a souvenir. They would have it mounted and they would hang it on their wall as a souvenir. Um, I am not sure why you would think this makes a good souvenir. To me, it's, it's kind of sad to see an animal that is no longer with us that should be swimming in the wild. But it's a great example of the hawk's bill. It's a good way to tell the, the difference between the turtles. Look at these nice jagged scutes. Remember, the back of the turtle, the scales are called scutes. So look at those right there. And these are the costal scutes here. Um, it also, if you want to look closely, you can see it's got, that's how it gets its name, the hawk's bill has that beak that extends out that kind of looks like a hawk's beak. Now, you're probably looking at this. These are marbles that they put in for eyes, and then they had a piece of a coat hanger that would have been the hook so they could hang this up. So that's why it looks like it has this thing coming out here, and uh, it looks like it has eyes. Those are just marbles, though. So these turtles, again, can be found in Long Island Sound. Okay, and I said there were five. The fifth one is the leatherback. This is the largest turtle in the world. They can get almost 2,000 pounds. If you guys have seen those little tiny smart cars that are out on the roads today, this turtle can weigh more than those little cars. So imagine that, a turtle that weighs more than a car. Yeah, I'm kind of fudging the numbers there because the, that is a very small car and you don't see a lot of them on the road. And this is a very large turtle. So this is, again, is a replica skull of the leatherback sea turtle. It's as big as mine. It's bigger than mine. This, this head is larger than mine. But it needs to be because this turtle can be eight feet long. So not only can it weigh almost 2,000 pounds, but eight feet, that's longer. If I were standing up, that's as high as I can reach, is eight feet. Very, very large turtles, OK? So these turtles, why do turtles end up in Long Island Sound? Turtles migrate, just like birds do. They migrate up north for the summer, and then they go back down south to lay their eggs. The reason they come into Long Island Sound is they're looking for food. Some of the turtles, like the green turtle and the loggerhead turtle, those are point-to-point -point migrators. They swim from one location to another, the same place. Every time they migrate, they go to the same places each year. Some of them are wandering migrators, like the Ridley and the Leatherback. They just wander around wherever they can find food. That's where they go. So sometimes the Leatherbacks will come into Long Island Sound. Now this is probably the one that's sighted the most often. It may not be the most numerous in the sound, but this is the one that I get the most reports of because boaters see these. They're big and they really stand out. The other turtles could be no more numerous, but they're smaller and harder to see. These are really large. I actually, I'm gonna tell a little side story. I had a gentleman come into the Nature Center. This was years ago when we were in our old building. He was out fishing on the jetty and he came in, he's like, you're not going to believe this. I saw a dragon fly by the end of the jetty. 
So he was telling a bit of a fisherman's tale. What he described was an eight-foot leatherback sea turtle swimming. I don't know why he said it flew, but he said it went by, and it's, it's, he said its uh, wings were 12 feet wide, and it was probably a leatherback sea turtle that swam by the end of the jetty, and he was probably in the sun too long because um, he really described it that way. Okay, one of the other things. Leatherback sea turtles like to eat jellyfish. And if you've ever swum in Long Island Sound in the summer, especially around August, that's when our lion's mane jellyfishes are reproducing. Lion's mane jellyfish are reproducing. And these turtles like to eat them. If it had its throat, if you could see that, there would be a whole bunch of spikes all pointing downward so that when the jellyfish starts to go in there, it just goes right down. It can't come back out. They love to eat jellyfish. Now, what looks like jellyfish that we have in our houses, hopefully a lot less now, but we used to have a lot of them in our houses, plastic bags. And if a plastic bag is floating in the water, then this turtle is going to see it. Imagine the plastic bag, the jellyfish do this when they're floating along. A plastic bag is going to do the same thing. If it's just floating in the water, it's going to be moving and undulating just like a jellyfish would. The turtle says, oh, there's another jellyfish. They're going to go and eat them. If you ate a plastic bag, what would happen? You would have to go to the hospital. Turtles don't have that luxury. They don't have hospitals. Well, they do have hospitals. It's just harder for them to get to the hospitals. They could go to the Mystic Aquarium, and they would try and help them at their uh, seal stranding program, or the any marine mammal stranding program, and turtles. Uh, they take care of them all. So they could go there and they would try and get the plastic out and try and help that turtle. But it's not a good thing. If they eat that plastic, it's going to cause them a lot of damage. And again, they have the spikes in their throat. So when they start to swallow that plastic bag, they're going to realize pretty quickly that it's a plastic bag and not a jellyfish. But by then it's too late. It, everything is going down once they're in there. So we really need to be careful about plastics, especially bags and uh, those inflatable things that they put in, in uh, cardboard boxes to protect your, your uh, orders. Those aren't good either because they, they're going to get in the water and end up looking like a jellyfish as well. Okay, so we've gone over the five groups of turtles that we have in Long Island Sound. Now I mentioned that they go down south to lay their eggs. When they lay their eggs, their eggs are about the size of a ping pong ball. This is not a real turtle egg. Maybe a little bit smaller for some of the turtles, but this is about it. When they hatch out, they're going to be about this big. We should not see these in Long Island Sound or any eggs in Long Island Sound because that happens down south. When they hatch out of the egg, they're going to get out into the ocean. Once they're out in the open ocean, they're not going to go near shore for quite a while uh, until they're large enough to lay eggs themselves. So we shouldn't be seeing these coming into Long Island Sound. They should be out in the ocean somewhere swimming around. If anybody has any questions, you can put them up at any time. I've seen some comments. I'm going to go back and look at those in a second. But I also encourage you to put up where you're messaging from. I've already seen Marlboro and uh, Lebanon, Connecticut. so. Uh, keep putting those up there. All right, now we're going to talk about a turtle shell. And I have a turtle shell. This is a real turtle shell. This is from a green sea turtle. This was found in a dumpster. So I have no idea what the history of this shell is, but I was able to identify that it's from a green sea turtle. The way I was able to identify it, if you look on the back of the shell, I don't know if you guys can see, there are faint lines here. There are lines that go like this, and then there are faint lines that go like this. These lines mark the scutes, where the scales attach to the bony plates. These lines are the bony plates underneath. So looking at the scute pattern, you can tell a green sea turtle from a loggerhead. Leatherbacks don't have the scales, that's why they're called leatherbacks and the hawksbills and the ridleys you would also be able to tell, but they don't get this big. 
So it was down to either a loggerhead or a green. And looking at the pattern, you can tell this is a green sea turtle. You actually count the costal scutes along there, and then you can tell what kind of turtle it is. Because a loggerhead, logger has one more, I think, one more uh, costal skew. So this is also a piece of a turtle shell. Okay, and this would go right here. These are rows. So if you think about your ribs, you have lots of ribs, okay? We all have a rib cage. Those ribs curve around and they connect at our sternum up here. For a turtle, it's very different. They have ribs. Our ribs come off of our spine, just like their ribs. This one doesn't have the spine in it, but the spine will be right along this line here. Okay? This is a really large shell. I'll hold that up there for you guys. All right, so coming off of that spine would be these. And these are basically like modified ribs, ribs that have grown flatter. If you look at the bottom, if you take away these sides, okay, that looks like one of your ribs, doesn't it? Right down the middle. Well, these are modified, they've grown out flat, they've flattened, and they grow together. So if you look here, when, when bones come together, our skull has it too, because our skull is made up of lots of bony plates. They fuse together, uh, I think it's called stitching. When all those bones come together like that, okay? So they will stick them all together just like that, and you would make up an entire shell. You have a nice armored shell all the way along and then it has same thing on this side, and that's what makes a turtle shell that those, makes up those bony plates. And remember then, on top of this shell, you would have the scutes, the giant scales. The bottom of the shell, let's look at the bottom of one of these here. There are also scutes. There aren't bony plates, though, under the bottom, uh, like these. They're, they're shaped very differently. Um, but you can, again, see these are the scales that are coming all the way along here, okay? The bones on the bottom are um, not like modified ribs, okay? All right, do we have any questions coming up here? I can tell you a few other things about turtles. So most of you know turtles can swim really deep. How many of you guys like the movie Finding Nemo? If it rains this afternoon, maybe you should watch the movie Finding Nemo. Um, but. There are sea turtles in that movie. You see them swimming along. So sea turtles can stay underwater for a very long time, okay? Um, they can stay under for hours. Usually it's gonna be one to two hours, but if they're sleeping, they can stay under quite a bit longer. When they sleep, they actually slow their heart rate down, so their heart beats once every nine minutes. Imagine if you could slow your heart rate down once every nine minutes, we couldn't do it. We would not be able to stay alive. But a turtle can do it. They slow all their functions down. They just drift along. They get really calm. And then they're able to stay underwater. I think it's up to like five hours that they can stay underwater when they're sleeping. They can also go really deep. They can go about a thousand feet down. So. Again, there's a lot of pressure. As you go deeper in the water, there's going to be a lot of pressure. We would not be able to do that. We would not be able to survive holding our breath that long or going that deep into the water. All right. I'm going to move the camera over here so I can scroll through and see if you guys have any questions. Let's see. If you have any questions now, you can put them up. Oh, someone's asking about why the captions are mirror image. It's because I have the camera turned around so I can read the, uh, your questions. Wow, nobody has any questions. I've answered everybody's questions about sea turtles. That's awesome. How many of you, though, knew that we had sea turtles in Long Island Sound? Let's see if we have some uh, thumbs up for 
already knowing that we had sea turtles in Long Island Sounds. And how many learned it at the Nature Center? Put a smiley face if you learned it at the Nature Center. Okay. So, I hope that everybody's enjoying this. The eight-year-old knew. That's awesome. All right. I hope you guys are enjoying these programs. I'm going to keep them going. Uh, we're probably going to change them a little bit when the school semester officially ends, which for most of you is probably next week or two. We'll change up the format of these programs. I'm going to keep doing programs. Um, this week, I have a really special one. We're going to do a killdeer. And I'll have to check the killdeer nests because I want to do one that still has the eggs in the nest. But if I can find a killdeer somewhere in the park, we'll, we'll do a program on their nests, how killdeer uh, lay their eggs and make nests, which will be really fun. Uh, we've got a program coming up on Purple Martins, so keep an eye out for that. I'm going to be traveling to other parks, so you'll see me on the road somewhere in some park. And when I did the Fort Griswold Park, uh, somebody came up that had been watching. I think that's really cool. I don't know if you guys are going to be able to find me when I'm at a park, because I don't go to the most populated area of a park. I like to find a, a back-of-the-way trail or something. Um, but the Salmon River one was really cool. That, was, that drawbridge is, or a covered bridge is really fun. So I hope you're enjoying these programs. Please, if you have a topic or something that you'd like to learn more about, you can send us a, a message. You can do it through our uh, website, megspointnaturecenter.org. There's a contact us there. If you want to see our past programs, you can go to our YouTube channel, Meg's Point Nature Center's YouTube channel. You can subscribe to that and see the programs are posted there. Uh, and then you can continue to tune in at 11 and 2 from Tuesday to Friday to see our live broadcasts and ask questions and say comments as I go. So thank you all for tuning in today. I'll see you all this afternoon at two o'clock. I'm hoping the showers will stay away and we'll be doing something outside at two o'clock. So I'll see you then. <laughs>